Welcome everyone to lecture number 37, the nucleus part four. Actually, I'm gonna go backwards a little and talk about atomic spectra. In the last lecture, I mentioned there were energy levels inside the nucleus, but let me tell you uh, uh, about the atomic or electron energy levels, okay? I, I meant to do this earlier. All right, uh, so let's go backwards and discuss atomic energy levels and atomic spectra. All right, now I'm gonna ask you to use your imagination. Imagine I'm a carpenter, and I'm a terrible carpenter, and I make a staircase, okay? And I make a staircase, but it's not an even staircase. I don't know if you can see this, not that good, okay? So suppose I make a staircase, but the steps are not flat, they're crooked, and they're not evenly spaced, okay? So they're crooked, and they're not evenly spaced. Okay, now suppose I throw a ball up these steps. Well, if the step is on an angle, clearly it's not stable and it will fall down. And clearly the, the ball cannot be between the steps. That's my rule. So if I throw a ball up there, it's gonna fall. Now, it's, if I make this staircase A and it has a certain pattern, uneven, long steps, short steps, all crooked. What happens is if I throw a ball up there and it makes a pattern of sound, if I close my eyes or look away and I hear a pattern of sound, boom, boom, clink, clink, da, 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 da. I always know that that pattern of sound is stair, staircase A. By the same token, I can make staircase B. And again, it has a different pattern, okay? It's also crooked. Okay, but it's got a different pattern of crookedness. So if I threw a ball up staircase B, once again, it would make a pattern of sound without me looking at it. Clink, boom, bong, bing, bong, 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 whatever sound it made, I know it's always staircase B. So every staircase has its own pattern of sound or its own energy levels. Okay, so this is important. And it's also important to notice that the ball, whatever I throw, can never be between the steps, okay? And if it gets on the step, because the step is tilted, it's unstable. Let's look at an atom, okay? So every staircase makes a unique pattern of sound and nothing is allowed between the steps, okay? So atomic spectra also have unique uh, 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 sound or energy. Uh, photons, now remember, are gonna give all their energy of none of their energy, right? Before I talk about that, I wanna mention the Pauli exclusion principle. Okay, named after Wolfgang Pauli, Pauli. Okay, essentially this says that no two electrons can be in the same state at the same time. So if we imagine electron energy levels, what I've been saying in almost every lecture is that everything wants to be in the lowest energy level. So how come in an atom, all the electrons are not in the first energy level? Okay, I'll call that N equal one. There's an N equal to two n equal to 3, n equal to 4, n equal to 5. How could there be electrons in other orbits? Why isn't everything in the first energy level, the lowest energy level, the ground state it's called? And that's a great question. Well, first of all, if every electron in every atom was in its ground state, then you and I would not exist because chemistry is all about electrons trying to go to their lowest energy state. So if every atom or every element had electrons in their lowest energy state, nothing would combine and we'd have no molecules, okay? The Pauli exclusion principle is a way of stating this, okay? Every energy level, we'll learn this in chemistry, has a certain number of properties. And for now, I'll just say red shirt and green shirt, okay? No two electrons can be in a certain level and have the same red shirt, okay? Or the same pair of shoes or something like that, okay? Really, we're talking about quantum things, but the point is no two electrons can have all the same properties and be in the same place at the same time. So the Pauli or Pauli exclusion principle just says that no two electrons can be in the same place at the same time. And so in fact, it's what gives us the certain number of electrons in each energy state, as we'll see in chemistry. All right, that's the Pauli principle. So suppose we have a nucleus, and we have electrons not drawn to scale. Remember, the electrons are very far away. Atoms are mostly empty space. Now, I wrote up here, photons give all their energy or none of their energy. So you wish you could find somebody to love you with all their energy or none of their energy, all their love or none of their love, right? Not going to find it. But photons are like that. So suppose photons hit, hit a system. What system? The system could be this eraser, these glasses, 
pen, my big nose, could be anything. Suppose a photon hits an electron in the system, okay? Just like throwing a ball up a staircase. Well, the photon wants to give all its energy to this electron. If it gives all its energy to the electron, it has to be just the right energy to allow it to go on one of these steps, okay? Has to be just a, so suppose this photon gives all it would give all its energy to this electron and it would put it right there between two levels. What would the electron do? The electron would say, man, I'd really love to have your energy, but you would put me in a place I'm not allowed to go. So what happens is this photon would not give its energy to electron because it would put it in a place it's not allowed to go. So we would say that this system is transparent to this photon, transparent. In other words, the photon tries to excite electrons, but it would put electrons in orbits they're not allowed to be. They put them between the steps, between the steps, like throwing a ball up the staircase, going between, it's not allowed. So what does this photon do? Nothing happens because the electron knows it's not supposed to go there. So this photon then would pass through the system. This system, we would say, is transparent to this type of radiation. So what's something we want to be transparent? And the obvious answer is glass. We want glass to be transparent to visible photons. So the visible photons come in, hit glass. What is glass? Silicon dioxide. Hits the electrons in the silicon dioxide, tries to excite them, but the electrons say, no, no, you put me in a place I'm not allowed to be. So they don't take the energy of the uh, photon and the photon passes through. That's why we make glass. But you know that in the summertime, if you touch glass, it gets very hot. Why is that? Well, the reason is because light from the sun doesn't just have visible light, but it has UV, ultraviolet radiation. Now, ultraviolet radiation has a different energy than visible light, different, different frequency. So what happens is the photon of ultraviolet light hits the silicon dioxide, the glass, and yes, it puts an electron up, I'll make this up, to a level it does like to be. See, it's up there, it's very happy. Isn't that great? But again, just like the steps that were crooked, the ball cannot stay there, it's unstable. So what happens is, like the ball, this electron can fall down, and it can take skip a step, it can take any pattern, but there will be a pattern, just like there was a pattern, clink, clunk, boom, boom, a pattern to staircase A, Boom, boom, bing, bum, 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 a pattern for staircase B. This atom would have a pattern of radiation that comes out. Now, this could be color or it could be heat photons, infrared. The pattern that comes out, the colors that comes out, we call this the spectra. Spectra means color. So all hydrogen atoms have the same spectra. All helium atoms have the same spectra. So if we look at the spectra, the colors coming from a star, we know what elements are in there because each staircase has its own pattern, okay? So what happens with glass is as these photons drop, uh, electrons drop down because of the ultraviolet photons, what happens is heat photons are given off and so it's hot. The same for the sand on the beach. When you walk on the beach barefooted, the sand gets very hot because the ultraviolet radiation is being absorbed, exciting electrons in the sand. And as the electrons drop down, they give off infrared or heat photons. So here's a question. Why is this marker red? What happens with red? Well, visible light is hitting it. What is visible light? Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, by the colors of the spectrum. All those colors are hitting some chemicals, which are electron levels, in this pen. What color is being absorbed? The answer is every color but red. The red photons are coming in, but they have just the energy that would put electrons in places they're not allowed to be, so they come flying off. So if a shirt or an object is red, those red photons are not being absorbed. If it's green, the green photons are not being absorbed. So when you make a dye for a color, for a shirt or clothes, what you're doing is you're making the energy levels in, in the chemicals. So if it's a green dye, that means that green light photons will not be absorbed. They'll be reflected out. Every other color will be absorbed. So if you have your colored 
clothes and you put them in a laundry bag in a complete dark, what color are they? And the answer is there is no such thing as color. You think that this pen is always red. Well, without visible light, there is no such thing as color. Color is the interaction of matter with visible electromagnetic radiation. If there is no visible electromagnetic radiation, there's no such thing as color, okay? So the energy levels of the atomic energy levels are what makes the spectra. Photon comes in, this is the photoelectric effect, the uh, uh, um, effect uh, for which Einstein won the Nobel Prize. Okay, so a photon comes in, like we said, if it has just the right energy, it can put a, excite electrons. If it doesn't have the right energy to excite electrons to an allowed orbit, then the photon is transparent. Okay, if it has just the right, it gives all its energy and it would put an electron in an allowed orbit. Okay, so we, ma we, we know that the atoms have these uh, energy love. And when the electrons fall back down, because it's the electric force, which isn't that great, the energy that comes off is visible light or heat. Okay. Now, inside a nucleus, we're not talking about the electric force, we're talking about the nuclear force, which is much, 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 much stronger than the electric force. So if a nucleon goes to a lower energy level, because the energy levels have so much more energy because it's related to the nuclear force. When a nucleon goes to a lower energy level, the photon that's emitted is a very, 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 very energetic photon. And the most energetic types of photons are gamma rays. So we imagine these energy levels inside the nucleus where nucleons can fall and give off a photon. Now remember, when a photon's emitted, a photon has no charge and no mass. So the proton number is, is unchanged. So when a nucleus undergoes gamma decay, uh, the uh, element remain, keeps its identity, no change. If an element undergoes positive or negative decay, it can gain a proton or lose a proton. And if an element undergoes alpha decay, remember alpha decay is a helium-4 nucleus. If an element undergoes alpha decay, it loses two protons. If it loses two protons, element 30 becomes element 28, and so forth. If it undergoes two alpha decays, element 30 becomes element 26, because it lost two protons, and then two protons again. Okay, gamma decay, once again, shifting energy levels, gamma decay, there's no change in nucleon number, uh, no change in nucleon number, no change in proton number, and so the element remains unchanged. Okay, in the next lecture, we'll start talking about uh, uh, doing some problems with half-life and uh, elements becoming new elements, okay? But I wanted to do this for you so you understand why things have color. So something has color because visible light photons are either being absorbed or not being absorbed, okay? And it all has to do with the energy levels and the fact that photons either give all their energy or none of their energy. And this is the so-called photoelectric effect. And once again, without the, in the absence of visible light, visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. There is no such thing as color. Okay, have a good one and see you next time when we talk about nuclear decay.